There are a number of different uh, resuscitation cots in Western Australia. Uh, one in common use is the Fisher and Paykel Cozy Cot, uh, which we'll describe here. Um, so we've got the Cozy Cot component here and the rest of it, and this is our T-piece resuscitator. Before we commence resuscitation, it is important to we start our five moments of hand hygiene. In preparation for the resuscitation, uh, we need to check that uh, everything on the cot is working and is appropriately stocked. The so first thing we're going to do is turn it on. So we need to turn it on at the wall and uh, then we need to turn it on on the cot. We know that it's come on because it's made a bit of a, a buzz. The next thing we look at is the temperature because we want to have a nice warm surface onto which to receive the baby. When the cot is not in use, it's going to be on a 25% heater output or in a pre-warm. So as soon as we are anticipating that we're going to have a resuscitation uh, from a birth or a baby on the ward, we're going to turn the temperature up using the manual button. And if we need to increase the temperature, what we'll do is use this um, adjustment uh, dial. And you can see that the percentage output is indicated here. We want to also see the baby, because um, a lot of the uh, birth rooms are, are a little bit dark. So we will use the light in the cot itself and it gives us a nice, nice clear vision of the baby, or certainly of the cot itself there. We also want to know how long the resuscitation is going on for. So if, the, if it's a birth you're attending, as soon as the baby's body is born or if it's a resuscitation on the ward, generally it's when the baby comes to the cot. You make a note of the time on the clock in the, in the ward or in the uh, birth room and at the time that uh, indicated, we're going to turn on the APGAR clock using this button. And you can see the seconds counting up. It will alarm at one minute, at five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 and so on for as long as you're continuing on the resuscitation. So, the rest of the cot you, uh, um, works using compressed gases. Here we have compressed medical air and compressed medical oxygen. Uh, we have to turn the gases on and check the levels. Both of the cylinders should be at least three quarters full and you can see here that it's definitely uh, adequate and similarly with the, um, with the air. Now, it may well be that you've got oxygen just via the cylinders, but it is also available on um, plumbed wall oxygen, generally not the air though. Um, by this stage, you've got a nice firm flat surface with uh, warmed towels and wraps. So we've got something to use to dry the baby and then something left here to actually wrap the baby in. Ensure that your blender, which is a combination of the air and oxygen, is preset to 30% um, gas mix uh, as per the WA addendum. And this flow meter here will be utilized um, to make to control the rest of the uh, near puff. Next, we need to check the suction. Let's just move that out of the way. Uh, the suction is uh, attached to the oxygen cylinder in this instance, or it could be on the wall, but the principle is the same. Make sure that there's enough tubing length in order to reach the baby and an appropriate wide bore suction catheter. Uh, we use the straight suction catheter in this instance. The suction needs to be turned on, but not too strong. So no more than 100 millimeters of mercury, um, probably 80 millimeters of mercury for a small baby. 
Next we check the level of the oxygen and we want to make sure that it reaches 100 millimeters of mercury at least. We occlude the tubing by kinking it and turn the suction on via the suction control dial here, this yellow knob. Turn it up until we are happy that the it reaches 100 millimeters of mercury. And just make sure that it is a, a millimeters of mercury dial. Some of them are kilopascals, some of them are pounds per square inch. All right. Uh, and turn it down should it be uh, too much. Let it go, see where it goes to, and turn your suction off. If you leave it on, it will deplete your oxygen um, for the rest of your uh, resuscitation which might leave you short. The video will demonstrate the checking of the Nearpuff T-piece ventilator. The T-piece is gas dependent, so we will need to turn the gas supply on. We'll turn it up to a flow of 8 litres and we will commence on 30% oxygen. The next uh, step is to check that our top and bottom pressures are correct. So initially what we are going to do is occlude the, uh, both openings of the T-piece with our hand. The maximum pressure relief prevents use of excessive pressures when ventilating the neonate. First thing we need to do is to turn the peak ins inspiratory pressure up to maximum on the PIP um, dial. So PIP being peak inspiratory pressure. The maximum pressure relief prevents the use of excessive pressure when ventilating the neonate. Turn the peak inspiratory pressure or PIP dial clockwise to its maximum. Occlude the peep opening and view the manometer. To set the positive inspiratory pressure or PIP, turn the pressure control anti-clockwise until the pressure reaches 30 centimetres of water. It's preferable to stand at the head of the cot so you can see more accurately. The setting according to the WA addendum is um, 30 centimetres PIP for a baby who is 34 weeks gestation or more. And um, the PEEP or proximal end or positive end expiratory pressure will be five centimeters of water. For a baby who is less than 34 completed weeks gestation, um, the pressure will actually be 25 on five. So you continue to dial it down anti-clockwise until it reaches the 25. In order to set the end pressure or the PEEP, um, this is known either as the positive end expiratory pressure or proximal end expiratory pressure, adjust the PEEP valve situated on the um, T-piece. You can see here there's a, uh, a negative symbol and a positive symbol. So uh, in order to adjust it up, you head towards the positive and to adjust it down we go in the other direction. So we get five centimetres. Um, verify the pressures on the manometer by intermittently occluding the PEEP valve and to see that you get the pressures that you uh, require. Once we've checked the uh, ventilator pressures are correct, turn the gas off and purge the lines so that we don't put any undue pressure on the valves and that uh, make sure that there's sufficient gas for the resuscitation.